Welcome to the Rivers and Roads live stream. I'm so happy that you can be here to listen with me while we play through the entire EP song by song and have some discussions along the way. I'm going to leave some time after each song for some questions because I know that that's what you guys are going to be interested in. Sometimes it's the little tidbits that you think about when you hear a song that you're like, I wonder this or this guitarist or this studio or what trouble there was making each song. So I'm going to leave some time for those things to happen um, as we go. But here we go. We're going to start with track one, which is River Flow. So here we go. And I had so many great musicians on this EP, um, and we mostly tracked at Sound Emporium and Love Shack over the two years that it took to make this. <laughs> Sorry about that. And it was musicians like um, Ilya Tashinsky and Tim Lauer on the keys there that sort of fill out those organ parts too. My life has seen some trouble, I guess for all the same. When you want what you don't have, but this hand me down's okay. So yeah, I'll take my Really wanted these lyrics to be relatable, so I did go back and rewrote a lot of the lyrics to suit this project because I'd already written it as a pitch for another artist. And it's um, Howard Willing who's produced, mixed and engineered this whole project and dealt with all of the little bits that we had to go through to get it ready for you guys. allow a little bit of time for some questions for you guys and um, this is going to be up on YouTube after the fact so if you think of other questions that you have um, feel free to revisit this video once I actually post it live and um, just jump in the comment section and throw in a comment there and I'll answer it as best as possible um, I don't have all the answers but I will try my very best um, this next song which is called call you up I was a little reluctant at first to include this one on the project, but I'd, I'd had this and I'd um, written this with another artist called Jess and the Bandits. And I really believed in the song and it was one of those ones that would just play in my mind and play in my mind. Um, just as, as I was thinking about what songs I was going to record and how I was going to move forward as an artist. And it was one of those few that I would circle back to and be like, she didn't record the song what do I do with this? And I've written, there's probably dozens, if not hundreds of songs out there that I've been a part of in the co-writing process that just kind of sit out there and do nothing. And that's just part of the creative process. But this one I'd circle back to, I was like, I still love this melody. There's something special about it. And I went back and revisited it with new 
with just a new sort of focus on it and I thought about what this song would be if I was to record it what's my personality with the song and um, I rewrote the lyrics and I rewrote them to be more about um, being in New York I've spent a lot of time traveling and New York's one of those places where everything happens and I always think about how big the city is but also how lonely it is so if it was a heartbreak that was happening in New York no one would notice so I, I just thought I did that sort of that I planted that seed and I got it sort of got stuck in my head so um, this is Call You Up and um, this one features um, Ilya again on guitar and Tim Lauer on keys and um, you know I, I throw in a few instruments here and there throughout um, this entire EP I'll discuss that as we go but if I forget to mention who's played on what feel free to throw that in the comments section too but here we go this is Call You Up. I do love that melody in that chorus. It's like a run-on sentence that keeps finishing its own thought. Downtown subway drawing circles on the glass tonight. Guess that I held a balloon up and dreamed we'd float. But I can make you feel something you don't. And then look. If you have any comments or things you want to discuss, now would be the time so we can go right into the next song. song I'm glad I, I'm glad I decided to put the work in it's hard sometimes because when you rewrite a song you're like you still think about how you originally wrote it but you have to kind of let it go and just think of it like this is the first time I'm hearing it and as soon as you write new lyrics that mean more as soon as you play it a few more times in your head you're like that's how it should have always been it's it's a strange process writing um and you have to let go at some point and be like it's finished um but yeah, and, and, when, and knowing when to do that, that's also another hard one. Um, next up is Dreams of Mine. Um, I wrote this one about, I guess it's really personal to me because I grew up in a pretty sort of low-income family and I never really wanted much, but I suppose I always hoped someday something would happen. But, you know, you never really think 
well, I'm going to end up on tour and traveling the world. And I mean, who does that? Um, I'm very thankful for the position I've been in, but I, you know, I still remember where I'm from and um, and I know a lot of people are in that same sort of position and we all have dreams, like we all do. And whatever it takes for you to continue dreaming, that's really important as well. But here we go. This is Dreams of Mine. players that's exactly what you should call yourself steel instrument guitar players he picked it up it was um in the, i think it was on the wall in sound emporium and we found out the last time that that instrument had been played was on um the last alison krauss and robert plant record so it was like yes let's do that accordion And that was um, one of the key players, Tim Lauer. He um, suggested accordion and never in a million years would I have thought I'm going to put accordion on a song. But as soon as we heard what he was doing with it, and this is Howard and myself, it was like, yes, it just brought it to a whole other place. songs on this EP. I did do videos and video visualizers for them because I think it's really important to showcase a little bit of what I'm seeing with the music. It just gives you that other layer that helps you experience music in a different way. And most of this visualizer was shot at night time with um, Chelsea Thompson from Dire Image and we went out into the woods at the back of my house. I, I did get a lot of mosquito bites, but it was totally worth it. I'm going to allow a little bit of time for discussion because I think it's important if you've got any questions feel free to throw them into the comments section and again if you're watching this again I will still comment I don't care if it, you come back a year later and you've got questions that's totally cool with me now we're going to move on to maybe Memphis which is definitely one of my favorites on this this EP I think um, the musicality is the thing that sort of gets me about this song because I wrote these lyrics about sort of traveling and you know again it's one of those sort of struggling relationship type songs and I find them easier to write than love songs but I wanted to sort of capture trying to have the relationship and sort of I was mixing up the idea between the cities that I was traveling to and the people I was having relationships with so I thought that was sort of a fun idea as a songwriter to sing the name of um, the city rather than the person. I, I just, I, I thought that was a really interesting idea. So here we go. This is maybe Memphis. She says this road looks just 
like any other road. As she fills up the tank somewhere in New Mexico, his voice still echoes, I'm sorry, in the dark of her mind. As the clouds roll in, her heart takes the will to She said hello to Houston He just left her bruised when She landed in Santa Fe Then love just wanted to say goodbye This she is something that Howard Willing, my producer, sort of taught me about maybe being in the studio. It's also hiring the right people to play the right parts. Because obviously I play guitar quite well, but bringing in someone else to interpret the song in a different way. You know, we had some references of, I think it was Lucinda Williams and some other artists, maybe Gillian Welch or someone like that, and played them to Ilya, and he got it right away, and he tuned his guitar to, I think it was C tuning, which it's... it's some other tuning, it's open C rather than just like your E A D G B E sort of tuning. It's all based in the chord of C, which is the key of the song. And it just makes you hear it in a different way when you're not hearing the same sort of notes being picked like you would in a normal guitar. when I listen to this song. I'm, I'm, I'm very excited about the way this turned out. So if you've got any questions, let's do that now before we jump into the last song, which is Young and Stupid. I thought it was an interesting idea to write about when I wrote Young and Stupid. I was thinking about when you're young (laughs) and I mean young as in like we all feel young but when you're actually young and in your sort of teenage years or your early 20s you are sort of fearless because you don't know what can go wrong and you kind of tolerate a lot of stuff that as an adult you just wouldn't in a million years want to relive So I just thought about how there's sort of this beauty about looking back on youth and going, everything was great then. But also, when you actually think about the emotional content of what happened back then, it's like, gee, that was really hard. Um, I really struggled then, or no one understood me, or I went through this, or I went through that. And it still doesn't overtake that was still kind of beautiful back then everything was perfect back then so I think you kind of have rose-colored glasses in a way when you think about youth and what the idea of youth is so I I wrote this song and this one took me a long time to write because I kept rewriting and rewriting the lyric Um, I probably could have kept going until I basically told myself to stop Um, because there are all of those sort of parallels between well I still feel young but I'm not young it was really hard then but it's also really hard now but there's something about when you look back on youth that it just feels different and 
there's something to be captured, like something that happens in your youth that you carry forward into today. Like when you become, whether it's your personality type or you become emotionally aware or whatever it is that happens, who you are when you were in your, whether it's teen years or early 20s, whatever it is that you were thinking back to when you think about youth, that's still who you are even though it's absolutely not at all. There's still that seed there of that person and that grows into whatever you choose to, you know, feed it with. Um, so this is Young and Stupid. I'll probably talk a lot through this, but I really went there with the lyric and really wanted to make this really colourful, interesting 70s style psychedelic lyric. Um, so here we go. This is Young and Stupid. friend we both just won't sit still and the 17 year old in me still wants a thrill when I'm higher than a kite nothing good will end to be young and stupid again still the eyes and the This one again is um, Tim Lauer on Finding piano, and, and I had um, uh, Vic and Indrizo on drums and well, Sam Hunter on guitar, and, both play and I played some guitar and I played some keys and strings as well. But I played string parts on keys. <laughs> Yes, I am playing the guitar solo. And Sam is doubling me. I think I'm in the left ear if you listen with headphones on. And if you've got any questions, now would be the time to ask me and I'll see what I can do about answering them. Um, this has been such an incredible project. Um, every step of the way was challenging. Trying to make something during a pandemic is not advised. <laughs> but like you all probably experience, yeah, life goes on and you have to do what you have to do. Um, so... I just kept writing and kept writing and you know this is you know this is part of the process of being an artist is basically to write what you're currently experiencing and hope that it's relatable and hope that it will stand the test of time and I, I love what I created I'm a very critical person it's hard for me to listen back to stuff that I've made even just a couple of years ago I'll be, I'll be like ah you know that vocal or this part or that part you know it's challenging to 
stop creating even though it's been put out like your brain will still go back into what if I do this or what if I do that but thanks to everyone on Kickstarter this project got made in a relatively timely fashion in terms of recording as an independent artist and I made music videos I am I have another music video to come out for Young and Stupid and that comes out on June 5th and I'm just I'm just so proud of this project and how it did such an amazing job in producing and um, mastering was done by Ryan Smith at um, Sterling and the vinyl mastering was done by Dan Scheich at um, and I just can't I can't thank these people enough for putting their time and effort into making something that I'm super proud of but again thank you for listening along watching along and come back at any time to revisit this and ask me questions that you've got um, and I'll try my best to answer them thank you for making this possible and making my you know it might be a small dream but making my dreams come true and I'm able to share them with you so this one is for you and thank you very much and look forward to chatting with you again soon more songs to come <laughs>